Okay, compass bearings and true bearings. So, with all trig, of course, we come across some uh, bearings too. So, with the bearings, uh, it's about different angles and stuff, and we can use right angle trig to actually solve a few problems. Now, we've done these since year nine, and I'm sure we still love them ever since then. Um, so, obviously, of course, doing extension or advanced uh, compass bearings, uh, there's going to be some tricky questions in these ones. So, let's start off by talking about well, what a bearing is, a compass bearing is, I should say. So, we all remember our compass rows, okay? So, we've got north, east, south, and west. Never eat soggy wheat bix is what I learnt when I was at school. Um, just the order, clockwise. So, the annoying thing about compass bearings is that we mentioned them clockwise. Now, when we do most other trig, and you'll see this later on, we actually do most of our measuring anti-clockwise, which is painful, and we actually measure it from east to. But um, So for compass bearings, it's a little bit different. So with our compass bearings, we have um, all of these different things. And what we could say is, if we're talking about true north or true west... Okay, we're talking about walking in that exact direction. So if I'm talking about true north, or um, I think it is also known as due north and due west or due east. So not true, it's due, due. So if I say I'm walking due north, it means I'm walking exactly in the north direction. Okay, I'm not making any sort of little subtle changes. I'm walking in the exact north direction. Okay, so that's due. Now, with that being said, um, we can also walk in other directions as well. Okay, so let's say, for example, that I wanted to walk this direction, and we'll say that this direction is approximately 60 degrees from the northern direction. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to write our direction that we're walking as a combina combination of the two directions plus the angle. So we're walking in, in the northern direction, so it's either north or south. So we're walking in the northern direction. So if I'm walking this way, it's north. Okay, and then I'm so I'm facing north, I will turn 60 degrees, okay, into the eastern direction. Okay, so and that's how we write a compass bearing. Okay, so let's do one on this side. Let's say we've got one like this. Okay, and let's say this one in here is 45 degrees. Okay, so we're walking in the northern direction, but we turned 45 degrees in the western direction. Okay, so that's that one. So that's A and B. Let's call it A and B. Okay, so C. Okay, well, let's say we're doing this way instead and we're walking or we're facing 20 degrees that way. Okay, so I know it's not exactly 20 degrees, but let's just say uh, for the sake of the argument is. So we're facing the southern direction. Okay, so you start by looking directly south and then you're going to turn 20 degrees anti-clockwise in the eastern direction, okay? So basically, um, that's how we work out our ones. Now we're going to do one more and this one's going to be a little bit harder. Okay, not much more, but a little bit. So let's say it's 30 degrees this way, okay? Well, we start off by looking in the southern direction, okay? But how far do I need to turn around from facing south to actually face that direction there? Well, if it's 30 degrees from the western, it has to be 60 degrees down here. So this is going to be south 60 degrees in the western direction, okay? So it's always measured from north or south, okay? Never from east or west. Okay, and then you put that letter first, so wherever you're facing, so north or south, the amount you turn, and then in the eastern or western direction. So that's a compass bearing. Okay. Now a true bearing is a little bit different. Okay, so a true bearing is always measured from the northern uh, facing point. Okay, so we always measure from the northern facing point. Now we might decide that we want to, you know, go over this way and this is in here is 60 degrees okay so this direction here would be 0 60 degrees T okay now the reason we use this is because facing from north so if I'm looking north I turn 60 degrees clockwise okay so it's 60 or 060 so 60 so it's we always use three digits 
degrees and T. Now T stands for true north because we're starting by looking at the true northern direction. Okay, so looking at the true northern direction, we turn 60 degrees and we get our new direction. So let's say we wanted to do something instead like this. So this one in here, let's say it's 45 degrees. Okay, well, what we need to do for our true bearing is we start by looking at north, okay, and then we're going to turn clockwise until we get to the point where we want to go. So we need to go from north to east, which is 90 degrees. We need to go, okay, um, east to south, which is another 90 degrees, okay. And then from south, we need to get to the point where we need to go, which is an extra 45 degrees. So 90 plus 90 is 180, plus 45 is 225 degrees, okay? So three letters, and then the T for true north. So basically, you just need to work out, well, how far around the corner, or how far around the compass um, am I facing? Now, north, south, east, and west have their own special values. Okay, so north can be considered 000 or 360. Okay. East is considered to be 90 degrees, okay? South is considered to be 180 degrees, and West is considered to be 270 degrees. And we know that because it's just they're just 90 degree intervals, or by dividing 360 up into four bits, okay? So that's pretty much how we get our true bearings, okay? So by measuring clockwise from North around to where we need to go, okay? So a little bit different for these ones up here, Okay, these ones will always be a number between one and or between zero and ninety, not including zero and ninety. And these ones here are going to be a number between zero, 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 and three, six, zero. Okay. So with that being said, let's have a go on an example to do with these bearings. Okay. So a plane flies at two hundred kilometers per hour, and it flies from A to B in the direction of north, forty-five degrees east, for twenty minutes. Okay. So well, first off. Oh, let's finish off the question, reading question. The plane then turns sharply due east for 1.5 hours to C. Find how far north and east of A the point B is, and then find the true bearing of C from A. So find how far north and east, not northeast, so a big distinction there. So north and then east, because we know already how far it's gone in the northeastern direction, but north and east. Now the cool thing about this one is that it's 45 degrees and 45 degrees is halfway between zero and 90. Okay, and so you'll see something cool in a moment. So I'm just leaving that little feeler out there for now. So if a plane is flying 200 kilometers per hour from A to B for 20 minutes, we need to work out, well, how far does it actually travel? So 20 minutes is a third of an hour. So if we divide 200, the 200 kilometers by three, um, it will travel, so for part A, 66 kilometers or 66.7 so we'll say we'll just round it up to the nearest kilometer so 67 kilometers in 20 minutes okay so 67 kilometers in 20 minutes okay so it's going to help us for that bit so find how far north and east of a the point b is okay so it's going to so here's my north so this is my starting point so from A, my starting point, it flies to B, okay, at 45 degrees, okay, so it's 45 degrees northeast, okay, so east is in that direction, 45 degrees from north to east, so north, and it flies to a point B, okay, and so what we need to find is how far has it flown in this direction and in this direction, knowing that it has traveled 76 kilometers already. So let's find A and let's find B. Now for part, let's do A first. So we're gonna use some trig. So I'm gonna write Sokotoa up the top of my screen just to remind myself what the trig ratios are. Now we've got a hypotenuse and we've got an adjacent for A. So a hypotenuse and adjacent is cosine. So for A, we're gonna do cos of 45 degrees is equal to the adjacent, which is A, over 67, which is the hypotenuse. Now to get the A by itself, we're gonna multiply both sides by 67. To get 67 times cos 45 degrees is equal to A. 
And so A is equal to, I'm going to put that into our calculator, 67 uh, times cos 45 degrees. Okay, and we're going to be using our, tr um, our exact ratio or exact value. So remember cos 45 degrees is the same as one on root two or root two on two. Um, we'll do root two on two. So root two on two. So 67 times root two on two gives us 67 root two on two. And because it's actually a distance, we don't really like having, um, you know, thirds as distances. So putting it into a calculator, it's going to give us a value of uh, 47 point, and we'll round it to one decimal place, 47.4 kilometers, okay? Now to do B, okay? It's going to be sine 45 degrees is equal to B on 67. Okay, so multiply both sides by 67 to remove the 67 on the right hand side. Okay, now remembering that sine 45 is the same as cos 45, which is root two on two. Okay, so root two on two, so 67 times root two on two is just 67 root two on two. But again, we don't like having thirds in uh, our uh, as measurements, so we're going to simplify that to 47.4 kilometers as well. Okay, so with that being said, A and B are both exactly the same, and we could tell that from the start too, because this 45 degrees in here, 90 plus 45 is 135, plus another 45 degrees makes up an isosceles triangle. Okay, so this triangle was isosceles, so A and B must have had to be the same because it's an isosceles triangle. Okay, so that's just a cool little fact for this uh, particular question um, that we've done. So that's part A. So it has traveled this north and this east. Okay. Now, the next part of the question says find the true bearing of C from A. Okay, so I'm going to draw another um, problem over, or no, another diagram over here. Okay, so we know it flew from A to B. Okay, so if this is my northern direction at 45 degrees like that. Okay, and that was for 67 kilometers. Okay, then at B it turns due east or sharp east until it gets to point C. Okay, which is one of, and it flies for one and a half hours. So if it's flying at 200 kilometers per hour for one and a half hours, we just do 2. or 200 times 1.5. And we get that it's traveled for 300 kilometers. Okay. Now we need to find what the, uh, what the bearing, the true bearing of A to C is. So that is from here, around to there. Okay, so we've already got 45 degrees there, but we need this bit too. So we need the whole bit. So you're probably thinking to yourself now, well, how are we actually going to solve this? This one seems a lot trickier. And it is in a lot of respects. Okay, but we do know some information now um, about this. We know that this is 47.4 kilometers, and we know this bit along here is 47.4 kilometers as well, because it's an isosceles triangle, that first um, part of the trip. Okay, so it's traveling an extra 300 kilometers. Now, can you see a giant right angle triangle in this part of the question? And my answer is hoping to be yes. Okay, because we know now that this part here is 47.4 and the top part is made up of three journeys, which are two journeys, which is the 300 and the 47.4 as well. So the whole lot of the Eastern journey, okay, because it traveled a bit East and then it went sharp East, is 300 plus 47.4. So this whole journey here is 347.4 kilometers, okay? And then we can use that to find that angle in there, okay, which is the big angle of the bigger right angle triangle. Okay, so the 45 degrees in this part is actually kind of a red herring. We don't actually need it because we can do it in one big hit. Opposite, adjacent gives us tan. So tan theta is equal to 347.4, which is the opposite over the adjacent, which is 47.4. Okay, to get the theta by itself, we're going to do the tan inverse of 347.4 over 47.4. Okay, 
Okay, so theta is equal to, so we're going to put that into our calculator. So 347.4 over 47.4, and that's going to give us an answer of 82 degrees and 14 minutes. Okay, so to write a true bearing, so therefore the true bearing, remember it's only three digits. So we do have to round the uh, to the nearest degree. So the true bearing is 082, three digits, uh, 082 degrees T or true north. Okay, so a little bit trickier that one, but I'm hoping you guys uh, got that one. Okay, so it is just a matter of realizing where the angles are and that little bit of information to be able to solve those problems. But with that being said, uh, that's the end of this video and I'll see you guys in the next one.